Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Well, it's been a while since my last big picture update, and today I want to talk about the run that Bitcoin's had, uh, what I think is going to happen next, and how that capital tends to rotate, rotate into altcoins. So what narratives and projects are we like? Have we already had a mini cycle? Um, tie it back with the macro stuff that's going on with global liquidity and interest rate conditions um, starting to change. But it's crazy to think it's coming up on a year since we put on these um, rough projections on where we expect Bitcoin to go when it was trading at 17,000. And we've now um, tagged that 45,000 mark um, right on time around where we expected uh, as well, which is great to see. Obviously, these things are just a rough guide and we don't have a crystal ball, um, but it's always still surprising to see it play out uh, so accurately. So where do I think we are in terms of this Wall Street cheat sheet and psychology? Well, I think last time we'd had a bit of a run up to around 30,000 and even people then were starting to say, oh, you know, it's um, it's gone up a fair bit lately, expecting a bit of a pullback and everyone's kind of comfortable with saying, yeah, it's probably going to keep going down because we've been in that bear market for two years. And my key point was that that's kind of what we want. They're the ingredients that you need in terms of disbelief, which I think is exactly uh, what we've seen lately. And I spoke about a lot of friends, even big players that had a lot of capital on the sidelines in stable coins and the similarities to um, global stock markets and so on, where there's $5 trillion just sitting in the coffers or even in the bond market that can be redeployed back into stocks or even into you know property. We're seeing house prices back near record highs, even with interest rates um, at multi-decade highs. Okay, So everything's playing out quite nicely at the moment all around this um, Bitcoin ETF hype. And if you've stayed engaged with the market, you knew that this was coming. It shouldn't be a surprise to you, but we're obviously on the, the doorstep now with BlackRock receiving seed funding, all these ETFs in the coming weeks and months now um, due for approval. Uh, and I'm also going to touch on how I think we're going to get that Ethereum ETF and how that narrative's, I guess, fallen out of favor. And I think it's going to come um, back into favor when we, we're going to see that rotation of capital into ETH uh, and then alts. But everyone's pretty bullish. This is kind of getting to the point now where it's pretty widely known and whatnot. So it should get front run somewhat. And that's why we've probably had this parabolic run um, of late. Everyone in crypto and on crypto Twitter knows this is coming. But at the same time, those healthy ingredients where we've had a lot of people still pretty bearish and um, not picking on Capo anyone because there's plenty of traders that were talking about this 12K target. And this, you know, people like this with nearly a, a million followers are quite influential. And so you've got to think, well, if, if they're following along or positioned according to this, um, no, that's more capital that has to chase the market and is waiting for a pullback. And that's why we tend to not get... Um, deep retracements. So once that train leaves the station where you've had two plus years, the longest bear market to get on board, um, it's not easy um, to, to chase that market and get on board if your capital is on the sidelines. And um, I'll be interested to see what the next update is from a lot of these guys that were looking um, high 30s or $40,000 to be you know, a big resistance that we weren't going to be able to get over. Now we've really blasted through that um, on good volume and whatnot, spot buying on the exchanges and all those healthy ingredients of the bull market that we'd expect to see. I think last time I highlighted maybe a couple of black swans are the only things that I could see possibly dragging us lower. Um, again, today we've got people like Jamie Dimon lashing out, saying, hey, if I was the government, I'd ban crypto altogether. Um, interesting to see the power shift. Obviously, big bankers are some of the most powerful people in the world, but I think BlackRock really surpasses even them. And if BlackRock want this ETF and they want to make money from the fees from customers and so on, I think you know they're the ones holding the cards now. It doesn't really matter what people like Jamie Dimon might have been able to sway um, politicians uh, with donations and all that type of thing if it was another issue. But when it's um, now in the hands of BlackRock and all the money they have and political sway, I, I don't think there's a big chance at all of, of crypto getting banned. And even if it does in the US, it doesn't really matter. Look at all these other countries around the world that are got more favorable regulations and better tax rates and they want that capital and innovation to go there. Again, one of the themes for this next cycle I've been talking about is even though we might get this ETF in the US um, lead the hype, it's the move of power from um, the West to the East where there's larger population, more room for adoption in everything from just 
crypto and micropayments to Web3 and gaming, you know, all those type of things, we can see more people getting involved um, around the world outside the US. I think the other thing I said was, hey, even if... Um, Binance were to go down now we're in the bull market you know even that would that necessarily take us to new lows and we've kind of seen almost the worst play out now you know CZ um, going to the US and getting charged having to step down from Binance but the market has still shrugged off this news you know even BNB token um, you know, it hasn't capitulated. People are realizing what's well, not the end of Binance Exchange. I think we're going to get the alts run soon. These exchange tokens are going to make a lot of money off fees. Uh, at the end of the day, Binance wasn't equal to CZ and they're going to continue to carry on. People aren't just going to close their accounts now. CZ isn't there. Even stuff like FTT, um, people speculating maybe we'll get FTX 2.0 and I think that claims process is now scheduled to pay out a lot of customers in um, Q1 or Q2 next year. So all this really bad news that could um, capitulate things further, say in a bear market, if the CZ stuff had to come out, bull markets tend to strike this off. Um, another one is um, OX exchange, open exchange token, not to be confused with 0x, um, the ticker here, OX. So um, Suzu tweeting, good morning, speculation, he's out of jail and another exchange um, that's probably going to do well or at least get some trading volume and people are speculating that, hey, these guys have got a lot of followers, a lot of sway in the market. Um, worth speculating some of these exchange tokens if we're about to get this um, altcoin bull market. But back to Bitcoin for a second. This is a good chart um, shared by uh, Checkmatey from Glassnode. So this is just basically showing days destroyed so if someone holds a bitcoin for days months years and a long time and then they sell it that destroys a lot of um, holding hodling days and we see in the past when we have these really big parabolic runs a lot of people that are held for a long time they sell and take some profit last time we're at 40k a lot of selling this time around really not a lot at all comparatively because people have been through that bear market they're here for the long term they see the writing on the wall, all the bullish ingredients. So we haven't really seen any notable selling just yet in terms of long-term hodlers, which is, again, really, really healthy. People saying, make BlackRock um, and all these ETFs that are going to have to buy real Bitcoins, you know, make them buy it off retail, off people to, to charge their clients then. So why would you give up your Bitcoin if you know that they're going to have to accumulate real Bitcoin when those ETFs open is the idea there? Uh, so just in the short term, yeah, we're, we're pretty extended now on the weekly time frame. We haven't got any bearish divergences yet. I think this can, um, even if we cool off a little bit, that can just mean you know sideways chop and giving the momentum indicators a bit of time to cool off. So on the uh, daily time frame, for example, we do have a little bit of bearish divergence where um, you know lower and lower strength there, but higher and higher prices here and again we're just forming another bull flag it just looks like it wants to continue high here now the other line on the chart here i've got the yellow line here is global liquidity so this has been one of the big drivers for crypto markets um, in the past and pretty tightly correlated as you can see here when global liquidity and easy money money pumping into the system crypto tends to run and when things got really tight um, crypto really fell sharp as did a lot of other things stocks and so on but if global liquidity and money conditions start to ease again that's just another uh, tailwind um, for this bull market cycle to continue so yeah a bit of divergence there on the daily but really on the weekly time frame and even monthly big picture stuff that i've spoken about before we'll have a look at those um, time cycles and the halving in just a second um, but yeah, a lot of people are on the sidelines and a lot of people are now still waiting for that pullback. So I don't think it's going to come that easily. Again, uh, easy money conditions, reverse repo operations fell 110 billion today. So in terms of the banks needing these bailouts, the losses that they're sitting on on their balance sheets uh, and the Fed having to buy those and pump money back into the system... Um, this is stuff that was going the other way and they're talking about unwinding the balance sheet and tightening money conditions and so on. But again, we're already seeing, even with interest rates high, um, the reverse starting to happen again. Easy money, money printing. They're not going to call it QE or bailouts or money printing, but it is starting to happen. You can see here the enormous amount um, 
Q3, 23, 600, 700 billion dollars in unrealized losses. So these are figures that we're talking about that can get into the trillions of dollars to, to rescue these um, smaller banks in particular that are sitting on a lot a lot of losses on um, paper losses. And we know that can, in the past, start bank runs and so on, but the Fed have said, hey, we're not going to let any depositors lose out. And where's that money come from? Well, they've got to print it out of thin air and, and give to these banks. So the US dollar has been strong for the past week, but Again, correlations have started to break down. Bitcoin has still been ripping higher in the face of the US dollar, the denominator, um, going higher. Whereas in the past, and particularly in the bear market, we saw that correlation um, inverse. So as the dollar was getting a lot stronger, Bitcoin will continue to get weaker. So it's good to see all these things change. And if the dollar um, rolls over after it's having this bounce again, that's just more fuel that Bitcoin's going to like. Inflation rates, I think they've probably peaked and unless unless rates in places like Australia that haven't got as high need to go a bit higher again. But even that, I really think we're starting to see signs that a lot of people are being um, pinched at the grocery store, rent, all that type of thing. And I think it's the, the wealthy that can scoop in and buy those assets. But I think we can still have a uh, recession for the majority of the population um, without house prices necessarily falling that much or stocks. A lot of people, it's clickbaity to do videos saying there's a big crash coming and, and whatnot, there's all this debt, but don't forget that the, the wealthy have got more money than ever um, and they're making money on those higher interest rates from the bonds they own, their savings accounts, the properties they own when they've got to charge more rent. So I, I just don't think that the the Fed and the global powers are going to let all these markets just crash. And again, that is a good thing for Bitcoin, even if inflation does stay a bit higher. If it goes a lot lower and money becomes easy like we had for those years and years and years, again, Bitcoin can use that as fuel. So either way, I just think now that people understand the Bitcoin narrative on both sides of the coin, pardon the pun, um, the stars are just aligning for this cycle, which is great to see. Uh, gold's an interesting one. So it had a big breakout and then gave it all all back. So a couple of levels to watch that we're right in the middle of here. You know, that psychological 2000 level, um, if we're just coming back and kissing that again before we take off, um, that's great. On the monthly time frame here, you can see that it's still above these um, monthly closes, but it's these, these wicks here that we'd love to see it get above and stay above for really signal the golds off to the races. Um, same again with silver, nasty rejection where it got up to this 26 level where it's been a fair few times now. And that'll play catch up um, if we see gold break out. But I th certainly think silver's still got that industrial play as we start to see, um, as does gold to some degree, more and more technology and microprocessors and all that type of thing, the commodity super cycle that I expect um, to see going forward. All right, so what can be some other drivers of uh, the Bitcoin and I guess crypto cycle in general bull market? One of the things we've been focused on a lot and we did that video last week was on Bitcoin DeFi. So another string to its bow with all the um, monetary policy um, bullish tailwinds. These are the technical tailwinds as well. If Bitcoin can start to do lending, um, the Lightning Network takes off as we've seen in El Salvador, all these other things that it can have as well, strings to its bow, I guess. So for the past year or so, we've been talking a lot about um, the Taproot upgrade, our things like the ordinals and stamps, BRC tokens coming to Bitcoin now, and this is starting to take off. And the actual Audi coin has gone absolutely crazy of late. Um, I think it's done 50x what's from a couple of dollars there up to over $60 just in the matter of weeks. So yeah, I think we've seen almost a mini cycle off the bottom, which tends to happen. So Bitcoin or even ETH led or outperformed a little bit. And then we saw some rotation into the bluer chip or higher quality altcoins that people were liking that are doing good things. And we've already seen a lot of these meme coins um, Pepe, Audi and so on have a pretty decent pump. So all those things kind of tell me, well, maybe it's time for Bitcoin to trend sideways a little bit or just have a bit of a breather and get that, uh, that rotation happening now into altcoins whenever Bitcoin may top out. We'll have a look at that chart in just a second. But the other thing to mention is 
Some of the devs, and Michael and I spoke about this in more detail in that video last week, some of the devs don't like uh, what's happening here with these inscriptions and doing NFTs and tokens and that type of thing uh, on Bitcoin. So if that's going to be a big point of contention going forward, um, that could be something that creates a lot of FUD. You know, we're going to see on crypto too. Oh, Bitcoin network could split. There could be another hard fork, and I'm sure it'll get worked out in the end, one way or another. But this is just something to be aware of. That's kind of bubbling under the surface. Uh, and I, I did speak about this a little bit in this write up as well. In terms of um, stamps setting out to approve, um, improve upon the technique used to do these tokens um, on Bitcoin using UTXOs rather than the ordinals. Um, storing the data in the witness data so a bit technical there you don't really have to understand that but this is something that they're saying hey we could um, do an upgrade to stop allowing this to happen so they're not really um, they can be i guess deleted from the blockchain history of bitcoin somewhat so that's i guess the way to think about it some projects that we've mentioned, um, Botanix Labs, I'm going to have these guys on the channel soon do some interviews with some of these best um, Bitcoin scaling projects and Bitcoin DeFi projects. Stacks, um, I think one of the best things about our premium community as well is a lot of the guys in there are in the DeFi world working. Um, and we've got the head of Stacks Australia who's hooking me up with some um, some of the guys from the Stacks team to talk all about layer 2s and scaling on Bitcoin, DeFi on Bitcoin soon as well. Uh, and other ones, this is where we're focusing our research, one of these sectors, mid layer is one we covered the other day in the research platform. All right, so just finally there, this is the time cycles in green with the halving dates marked in black. Um, zooming right in here, we can see that, yeah, Bitcoin's had that run right up to around here. But I think it can continue a high, maybe even one more push to 50, put in, say, a, um, a weekly divergence here where price goes a bit higher and the strength comes down a little bit over the coming weeks or months, then that treading water. And it doesn't have to be a deep pullback either. You know, we can very shallow people continue to wait for it to go lower, miss the train, and that really serves as that rocket fuel along with everyone else that hasn't bought crypto yet. So when that, that ETF gets a lot of people on board for the first time, but that super cycle of you know all your friends, Uber drivers, everyone's starting to ask you about crypto. You, you guys that have been here before know how it works. And when it breaks out to new high, all-time highs in particular, that's when people get super interested. And I still think that depending on how things play out as we get closer, anywhere from 100 to 200, 300Ks on the cards for this cycle. Alrighty, so let's have a look at uh, a couple of other things here in terms of Bitcoin and rotating capital into Ethereum and altcoins. So this is the Bitcoin dominance that's been um, trending higher, just put in a little bit of a bearish divergence here on the weekly time frame. So again, another sign that shows me maybe we're um, close to that top where capital starts rotating into ETH or ETH and alts start to outperform. In terms of inflation and Bitcoin inflation and ETH deflation, this is something that a lot of people aren't really talking about at the moment that I think can get another big bullish tailwind for ETH along with the Ethereum ETF news coming back into favor once everyone starts focusing on what's next if we have the Bitcoin ETF uh, ready to go. So as you can see here, um, the Bitcoin inflation rate about 1.6, that's set to halve at the halving down to less than 1%, so let's call it 0.8%. But ETH's actually burning so much ETH at the moment. And as we get into that bull market with more people using the Ethereum network, using layer twos, doing their trading, minting NFTs, all that stuff, fees go up and that just means more and more ETH gets burnt. So we could see ETH with a fairly large deflation rate, you know, one or two percent, um, while Bitcoin was that, yes, it's low relative to say global inflation that's been trending anywhere from 5% to 100% depending what country you're in. So yeah, very bullish for Bitcoin, but also this is another driver for ETH as we go forward. And, you know, a couple of years ago, ETH was less than a thousand and I put that $10,000 target out there. I, I definitely think that's on the cards for this cycle. And well done to everyone that stayed bullish on ETH and that's been with us for a while when ETH was down to $80 in 2018 or 2019. And we outlined, you know, all these things are coming, NFTs, gaming, um, decentralized identity, 
all the things that we're now starting to see projects work on um, and are going to be hopefully used and adopted in this coming cycle. All right, so the ETH weekly chart, just following Bitcoin really here at the moment, nothing too much to report, but it's not as overextended um, as Bitcoin. So I think it's got room to run and we just know that once it sort of breaks out, it has these just wild, wild moves where it can rip hundreds of dollars a day, thousands of dollars a month. So that type of thing is on the cards once we get into the next market cycle. And the ETH uh, Bitcoin ratio here, if we just have a look, uh, this fib retracement, it's right back to this golden pocket that I really like, um, putting in a bit of bullish divergence here, um, showing a little bit of strength, even though price is just making marginal new, new low. So very, very close, again, telling me that ETH can start to outperform. That's total market cap with the crypto cycle, timing cycles that we have there. Done really well since we outlined these. Uh, total two just takes away the Bitcoin component to show ETH and altcoins. And total three is um, taking away Bitcoin and Ethereum just to show the altcoins by themselves. So if we have a look at this, they really haven't broken out yet. There's just so much room to run and not a lot of resistance. They can put in an easy 50% here in a matter of weeks, and that would mean a lot of alts don't move at all. So a lot of good alts are going hundreds of percent at that point. So that's kind of what I'm starting to favor now is the, the next step for this bull market. What projects are going to perform best? Well, again, a lot of the Ethereum scaling projects, you guys know the main ones, hopefully you're using them, Optimism, Arbitrum, Polygon. We're trying to focus on some of the smaller ones as well, how you can get those airdrops. Um, ZK Sync is one that we've done a lot of research on. Hopefully you guys have been getting um, plenty of use case out of that one. Scroll is another one Michael's been doing research on. And then I think Solana's kind of positioned itself as the biggest competitor to Ethereum, whether you like that or not for this market cycle, I think that's looking like it wants to have another leg up. And then old favorites with good communities, um, Cardano really just about to break out from these levels and just setting up nicely. You know, a lot of people are looking at XRP is one that there hasn't really performed well at all the past few years, but still a lot of people love and tends to have these monster, monster moves in a short period of time. Um, that's it for today, guys. If you want all our research and you want to check out the portfolios with the sectors that we're most bullish on, we're continuing to add to those. So if you want to look at these narratives and say, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm bullish on AI or gaming, we're trying to add to those with the best projects that we think in each of those sectors. And that's a big focus of our research now, bulking out that portfolio section. People want to know what alts are you most bullish on and what themes are you bullish on for the next market cycle. So if you're interested in all that, we're still running that lifetime special for the first um, thousand to sign up. I think we're at about 570 now. So hope you've enjoyed that video, guys. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share these videos around and I'll talk to you again soon. Cheers.